using these two conversions, let's see if we can take this point, which is in polar, and convert it to rectangular. Okay, well, no problem. X is R cosine theta. So what's R? For this point, right? Two. Times cosine of what is theta? Oh, pi over four. Pi over four. Okay? Now remember how I told you guys last semester like 20 or 30 times how important it is to know that unit circle? I said make sure you don't forget because you probably will forget it. How many of you forgot it? <laughs> okay? So you know what? On your next quiz or test, whatever that is, one of your questions is going to be write out the unit circles and label it again. <laughs> okay, even though you've already done that like five or six times, I'm going to make you do it again. So you better be ready to do that. Okay, so somebody tell me what is cosine of pi over 4? I know somebody knows. Square root of 2 over 2. Good. Now, if you take square root of 2 over 2 and you multiply by 2, what do you get? Square root of 2. There you go. And I bet you you already can tell me what the uh, the y is. Square. Right, because you know that sine and cosine of pi over four are both the same thing, right? So square root of two over two times two is square root of two. So there you go. Okay. So if you want to take a point that is in polar coordinates and convert it to rectangular coordinates. You just use these. Pretty easy, right? Just put the numbers in for r and theta, calculate it. Notice if the theta is any multiple of pi over 6, it would look like one of these. If the theta is any multiple of pi over 4, it's going to look like one of those. Okay? So if your theta is any one of these on the unit circle, I would expect you to be able to give me an exact value and to do so without a calculator. Now, if the uh, theta is not one of these values, then um, in most cases, you would be allowed to use a calculator. Okay? The reason why I say in most cases, because there are some exceptions, for example, there are some angles that you could use something like a sum or difference formula with a uh, sine or cosine. Remember that? Now some of you are shaking your head yes, and some of you are like, whoa, that was a long time ago. Well, unfortunately, some of the things you learned a long time ago still apply today, so don't be surprised if you have to use a sum or difference formula for sine or cosine. If you don't remember what I'm talking about, you need to go back and review chapters 7 and 8 in your book. Maybe even 9. Alright. So, let's go to the next slide. Okay, now. Unfortunately, going the other way is a little bit harder. Okay? You know how I've told you many times in math, you learn how to do something forward, like addition, and then you have to learn how to do it backwards, which is subtraction, right? Then you learn multiplication, then you learn division, and division's a little bit harder than multiplying. And then more recently, you learn exponential functions, and then how do you do those backwards? Right, logarithms, which is the inverse of exponential functions. And when you go backwards, it's usually a little bit harder than going forward, right? Well, unfortunately, the same is true here. Okay, when you convert from rectangular to polar, it's a little bit more challenging, but you've done the same thing for complex numbers several times now, so hopefully it won't be too hard for you. Now, notice we have two formulas here. One of them is R squared. equals x squared plus y squared. And that's obviously just the Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, the other formula 
says theta equals inverse tangent of y over x. Now, personally, I will write it this way. Tangent of theta equals y over x. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but that's the same thing, right? You're thinking, well, if tangent theta is equal to y over x, and I want theta, well, then all I have to do is take the inverse tangent of y over x. And that is true as long as theta is in the first or the fourth quadrant, right? And guess what? There are four quadrants. The first and fourth quadrant, that's only half of them. So if you use this formula and you don't think about the quadrant, then you'll be right about half the time. Actually, you'll be right less than half the time because I'm more likely to give you a test problem where it's in the second or third quadrant, just like I did with the uh, complex numbers. And the reason why is because I really want you to check, okay? And the best way to do that, of course, is just to draw a picture, okay?